Welcome everyone to this latest episode of Jim and Java. Welcome everyone to this latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. And in this episode, we will be addressing a number of issues related to giving and response forms. As always, this channel is designed to help nonprofit leaders increase their income and become fully funded. It's our goal, our desire to see your organization go to the next level and to increase its income. I hope that you'll decide to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. If you also are interested in a question yourself about anything in this broadcast or in past broadcasts that we've had, please make sure that you go out to Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. And you can always go to developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. Let's jump into our first set of questions. Well, our first question today is from Mary in Atlanta, Georgia. And Mary asks, what are the best giving amounts in an appeal? Well, Mary, thank you so much for that question. Uh, it's very broad and very generic, and I'll probably address it in a couple different ways. Number one, if you're writing a letter to someone who has given in the past, or maybe even someone who's not given in the past to you, but they've generally given at smaller amounts, my recommendation to you is start with something as simple as $100, to $500. Uh, not unreasonable in this day and age for someone to write a first check to an organization for $100, but you're also giving them another option at $250 or $500. If someone is in the capability or has the capacity to give a larger gift, I might start with $250 and go to 500 and 1,000 in that. So 250, 500, and 1,000. And if you know for a fact that someone is has major donor capacity, then you might go 1,000, 2,500, or $5,000. Now, that is for letters, appeals, newsletters. But if you're actually focusing in on an appeal, at a dinner, as an example, um, that I generally take a, a much different approach to a dinner. At a dinner, the span of individuals and their capacity to give it varies greatly. You may have someone who has the capacity to give a hundred dollars sitting next to someone who has the capacity to give a hundred thousand dollars, and so as a result, I almost never put very specific dollar amounts on the response envelope or response device for the appeal at a dinner. I generally have a blank that says tonight and a, and a blank, over the next 12 months and a blank, but I will put from the monthly category, I will start 50, 100, 200, or 250, and $500. And in some rare cases, I'll put $1,000 on there for the monthly. The monthly category is the only category that I generally will put in the, um, I'll put in the dollar amounts. Now, if you know something about the person that you're asking, for example, if that person has given in the past and you are doing a letter or challenging that person individually, you have a track record for that person. You have a history of what that person has given in the past and that will help you set the groundwork and lay a path for how much you can ask them this time. For example, if someone is giving at an amount of say $250 or even $2,500, I normally will put that amount as the first or second amount on there. And that will be the indicator that I'll use for our, our gift amount categories. So in other words, if someone's given $250, I might start with $100, $250, $500. If 
I know that they've got greater capacity with that. I might start 250 in the first category, go 500 and then 1,000 in there. But it really makes a big difference and it helps a lot. If someone actually has given in the past and you have a history or a track record of what they have given in the past, it will make a big difference in the amounts that you ask someone to give. So Mary, I hope that helped in uh, having somewhat of an understanding of the dollar categories that, uh, that we choose. Thanks so much for your question. I appreciate it. I've lumped the second question into this episode because it's very similar in its nature. And this question is from Betty in Evanston, Illinois. And Betty asks, why do you present numbers divisible by 12 when you give people options to give at your dinners? Well, Betty, thank you for asking that question. Um, I think your question came as a result of one of my prior broadcasts. And the reason I will present options to give that are divisible by 12 is for a very good reason. I would like people to consider the option to give monthly. So for example, a very frequent option that I'll give people is a gift of $600 or $50 a month will enable you to do blank. A gift of $1,200 or $100 a month will enable you to do blank. Or a gift of $4,800 or $400 a month will enable us to do blank. I really want people to consider the largest gift possible so they could give either tonight or over time. But I also want them to consider being able to give the same amount on a monthly basis. Now. I did a lot of testing with this originally, and where this concept came up was in doing and giving some counsel and some advice to close friends of mine working for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Uh, FCA is an organization that relies greatly on monthly gifts. They call them AMPS, Automated Monthly Partners. And for years, really decades, I had always used very simple numbers to ask for people during the dinner. I would ask for a gift of $500, $1,000, $2,500, $5,000. But I didn't consider until I started giving some advice to individuals with FCA, the possibility that those gifts, we could actually get more gifts as a whole by dividing it by 12 and make it easily divisible by 12, not um, you know $1,000 being divided by $83 a month. Uh, but I'm talking about $1,200 that's $100 a month, something that's easily divisible by 12. I found that by just simply changing from $500 to $600 to make it evenly divisible $50 a month, I was getting just naturally $100 more over the year from those individuals. By moving from 1000 to 1200 and making that easily divisible by 12 at $100 a month, I was able to get 200 extra dollars. And I started to find that happen all the way across the board. Now, where do I normally start with those amounts? I'll normally look at what is the typical giving amount for someone in our trends. What is the average or the median gift that we get from individuals? Normally, if your organization is like mine and so many others, the typical norm of someone giving an average uh, or um, medium will be somewhere in the neighborhood of $250 or $500. Challenging someone with a gift of $600 will move someone up from $500 to $600. They can easily get that. And remember, I mentioned that people like to give you what you ask for. And they may have been thinking $500, but when you ask for $600, they begin to think, well, you know, I could probably do $600. That's what they're asking for. Now, that doesn't stop someone from giving 500 if that was their attention. And I've even had people come to dinners and have $500 checks written out, and that's fine. 
But I've also had individuals who will hand in that $500 check, but also have a separate check made out for $100. They might bring in a company check for $500 and add a personal check for an additional $100 to make that $600. So it, I have really seen by putting an amount out there to people, it really can help make a difference and up your giving. Remember, our goals in development are win, keep, and lift. We want to win people our cause, keep them through cultivation, and we want to lift them to higher levels of giving. By offering dollar amounts that will be a challenge for those individuals and a step up, that will allow that lifting to take place with your organization. Now there's others who may come in at smaller amounts, more entry levels, those could be your individuals that are your new donors, people who are new to your organization, but having a challenging amount for those individuals who already like your organization and would like to help meet your expectations, it makes a big difference. So Betty, I hope that helped answer your question. Well, that ends this episode of Jim and Java. Once again, if you haven't subscribed, please do so and be sure to click the bell and make sure you click the top bell when you see the drop down because that notifies you when a new episode of Jim and Java comes out. And if you have questions for Jim and Java, please make sure go to Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. And also, if you have questions at any time, you can always put them down in the comments section of any video, but you can always go out to developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. So on behalf of our organization and Jim and Java, we hope, as we always do, that you will strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.